Welcome back guys. So today I wanted to make a video about the eight frequently asked questions about my previous videos about BGW320 AT&T Residential Gateway. I've been getting a lot of questions about it so I went through all of them and I picked out the eight most asked questions from all the people that would be interested in this. So if you haven't subscribed hit the subscribe button now it only takes a second. So let's get into it. Question number one, how do I connect devices to Wi-Fi with the QR code on my BGW320? So what is a QR code? It's a quick response code, it's square code, it's, in the, it's made up of black and white shapes. Many smart mobile devices with a camera scan and read info stored in these codes. So use one of the back of your gateway to connect to smart devices to your home network. If you're using a default Wi-Fi network, here's how you do it. Now, there are only three steps to it, and I've taken notes down so I could be precise about what I have to tell you guys. Now, you can only do this if you're using the gateway's default Wi-Fi network name and password. So if, you're not, if you have configured it to be your own, you are not gonna be able to use these steps. So make sure when you get the device, and everything's set as default, which is how it comes from the provider, and you haven't made any changes to the username and password, these are the three steps you're gonna to do to be able to connect your connect devices to Wi-Fi with the QR code on the BGW320. Here it goes. So number one, open your device's camera. Two, scan the QR code on the back of your gateway, which is the BGW320 gateway. There should be a code on the back of it and then tap the notification to join your home Wi-Fi network. And it's as simple as that. So if you got the requirements right, then you should be able to do this without a problem. Let's jump into question number two. What is an SFP module? And I understand this question because Prior gateways um, that AT&T provided for residential use, they did not have SFP module. SFP modules are coming into these new gateways that have the fiber connection. So that's a great question. And SFP module is a small form factor pluggable trans receiver. So you'll insert that on the back of your BGW320 uh, on the lower right hand side to connect your Wi-Fi gateway to the fiber internet. And that's exactly what the SFP is used for. Question number three. Why does my BGW320 have different color ethernet ports? Great question, because obviously this is a completely different gateway from previous ones, even though the port colors resemble the same throughout different gateways because that's the standard, but it's good practice to remind yourself to what color, which one maps out to. So the yellow ports support data transmission, speeds up to one gig or 1000 megabits per second. They're also compatible with 10, 100 gig, uh, 10, sorry, 10 100 meg uh, connections as well. So that's for the yellow ports. Now the blue ports support data transmission up to five gig. They're also compatible with 10, 100, and 1,000 megabits per second, and 2.5 gigabits connections. So the blue port obviously provides more uh, throughput, uh, so that's a good pointer for you to keep in mind. Now, the red port connects the BGW320 to the internet and AT&T fiber. It isn't used for any connection devices. If a cable is connected to this port, do not disconnect it. And these are the three different types of ports on the back of the, the colored ethernet ports on the back of the BGW320. Now let's jump into question number four. What is a fiber jack? Okay, another good question because obviously fiber jacks are something new as well because previous gateways did not have that. And uh, this is why I put a picture up for the fiber jack so once you see it you exactly know how to use it 
So the fiber jack is a wall jack that brings AT&T fiber inside the home. The bottom port connects to your BGW320 gateway fiber cable. Uh, you may already have fiber jack in your home. Um, maybe the tech will install it if you don't have one. So this is the picture of it. So now you know what it looks like. Question number five. Can I connect AT&T smart Wi-Fi extenders to my BGW320? Yes, you can expand your Wi-Fi coverage with an AT&T Wi-Fi extender if you already have it. If not, you can also order it too from AT&T's website. But if you check out my previous videos about routers, I personally like the mesh setup, which is pretty much nodes throughout your house and they're more than just extenders. They're actually proper nodes that broadcast a signal in all directions rather than extenders. They just shoot the signal out to the direction they're pointing in and they're not that reliable, obviously, and they're cheaper. That's why people get them, but cheapest is not always the best solution, obviously. We all know that. Okay. Um, Question number six, how do I set up a new or replacement BGW320? Now this question has been answered in my previous videos. You might want to go check them out. Um, but I'll repeat it again, of course, because uh, I'm sure a lot of people that have come to this channel, uh, this video have not visited my other videos. So, so I'll repeat it for you guys again, and I'll kind of walk you through the steps of how to do that. Now it's easy to set up or replace your um, Wi-Fi BG320 Wi-Fi gateway with the Smart Home Manager app. So you make sure you download the AT&T Smart Home Manager app. And if you have that, uh, you know, it's pretty fairly easy to set it up. Now, number one, open up the camera on your smartphone or tablet, well, whichever one you have you're using. Number two, scan the QR code on the front of the BG320. And the QR code is a square code made up of black and white shapes. Mobile devices can scan, read uh, info stored in these codes. So you're gonna scan that with your Smart Home Manager app. So tap the notification to go to your device's app store and download the Smart Home Manager. Okay, so, so once, yeah, so pretty much that, once you scan it, it's gonna take you to the Smart Home Manager app, you download it, and then launch the Smart Home Manager and follow these steps to set up your gateway. Now, there are a lot of steps to setting up your gateway, and you can follow my other video about that, and these are pretty much to get you going to how to set it up. So check out one of my other videos, and you'll see exactly how to set it up. Question number seven, how do I unplug the fiber cable from BG320, BGW320? The fiber cable is a white cable with green ends plugged into the back of your BGW320. Gently pull, uh, gently but firmly pull the cable from the white casing that has a red dot. And this is the picture of it, so you guys know what you're working with. Now, material surfaces may get hot, allow the area around the fiber to cool before you touch. So make sure you don't burn yourself, burn your finger. And uh, that's, uh, you know, something that the AT&T obviously want to tell you that as well. You'll find that on their website that they, before you touch their, in the back of the fiber uh, to pull the cable out, it gets really hot. So just make sure you don't burn yourself. Okay, last but not least, final question. And the final question is, how do I move my BGW320 Wi-Fi gateway? So if you want to move your Wi-Fi gateway within the reach of the fiber cable, remove all the cables from the back of your gateway, including your fiber cable, and just make sure that you know how they were connected before you remove the cables. So that way, once you place it to wherever you want it to go, you could plug it the same way that you had it before you moved it to another location. So place the gateway where you want to, plug each cable back into their appropriate ports and make sure that's again, same thing that I was just telling you, make sure it's plugged in properly. And even if it's not pro plugged in properly, it's not gonna do anything to your router, but sometimes 
cables or wires could go bad if you try to force them into some other port that it's not supposed to go in. But if it's an Ethernet port, it could only go in an Ethernet port. If it's a power cable, it's only going to go into the power. And fiber cable, pretty much straightforward, is going to go into the SFP module on the back of the, um, the router. So uh, it's pretty straightforward. So if you have uh, you know connected a few devices around the house, I'm sure everybody's technology savvy by now because we are living in that world. So I'm sure you'll get by this fine. Um, but yeah, that's it. Quick eight questions to help you guys with the BGW320 questions, the new AT&T Residential Gateway. And obviously this video is not sponsored by AT&T at all. This is just, um, you know, I wanted to help the people who have been asking a lot of questions about it. And these are the eight questions that I've found to be helpful to the people out there that have been asking a lot of these questions. So till next time, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.